Oh man, I love this song. Every time I hear it, I can remember where I was and who I was with. It reminds me of this. Does this sound familiar? Music is like a scent. It can instantly transport you to another time and place. I ask my guests to dish about their song with the memories that go with it. I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. I have a passion for music and a curiosity about how a song affects someone and why. Turn up your radio and let's explore Memories with a Beat. Hello, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. Today, I have Lee Piatelli with me. And I'm actually really excited to speak with you, Lee, because you are like a connection from a connection. So I have a friend, Vanessa, and this is Vanessa's stepbrother. And she was like, oh, oh my gosh, I, d- I can't believe I never thought of this. My brother is a drummer in Nashville, and maybe he would like to be on the podcast. So she reached out to Lee, and Lee said, yes, I'd be happy to do that. And so here we are today speaking after <laughs> some comical miscommunication about the time zones. You guys, why is one hour so incredibly difficult <laughs> to figure out? My family's in the Midwest. I'm in Florida. And for whatever reason, that one hour gets me every time. So Lee, thank you for you know working with me, being flexible and being here today. Oh, of course. I'm happy to be here. And, you know, Na- Nashville's in a weird place, you know, coming back to the East Coast. And, you know, what they say about making assumptions for me, I assumed I'm on East Coast time because <laughs> even though I'm in the South, I'm near the East Coast. And so I know we tried to schedule that a couple of times and that was, that was, that was my bad. I I need to get caught up on my time zone knowledge here. So that's, that's a hundred percent on me. No, I don't know. I don't know if it was, but if you want to take the blame, I'll let you be a gentleman and you guys, it was Lee's fault. Okay, Lee, if you want to tell me just a little bit about yourself, um, what you're doing in Nashville, I know I said a drummer, but maybe you want to be more specific. Well, you know, I'm originally from Boston and I grew up in a musical family. Mm. My dad and his side of the family, you know, every year from like 1988 and I wasn't born in 88, so I wasn't there for the whole thing. (laughs) But um, 2002 would record a Christmas album on Martha's Vineyard every year. And so at family gatherings and, you know, events, my family would perform either together or separate. And I got to witness music from a very young age both in the studio and live. And it really sparked the passion that I still have today that hasn't subsided in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, I lived in California for about eight years doing music out there. And I got in the country the last three, four years now, maybe I, I lose track of time, but I started getting in the country out there and that transferred to Nashville. I came out to visit on a recommendation from a friend and, booked my second trip a few weeks later and signed my lease to my apartment. And as of November 1st, here I am. Oh, how awesome is that? I love that. Now, what are you doing specifically in Nashville? Well, I'm a singing drummer, so I do play downtown on Broadway and a really nice gentleman, good, great guitar player by the name of Rye Bradley gave me my very first gig downtown when I moved. But I came out um, on a when I got that recommendation, I just came to visit, you know, yeah. check it out. I want to make my own opinion. And I got to sit in with a band, which now all of them are my friends. And they're some of the nicest guys I've ever met. And they literally let me not knowing who I am, let me get up and sit in. And after I sat in with them for a couple of songs, they were super encouraging. Oh, awesome. But I, I still play downtown now. I play all around at different bars. And then I also go on the road with different artists. And there is an artist I'm primarily working with by the name of Nick DeLeo. And you can check him out at Nick DeLeo Music. He's a great guy, great musician. And you can find him on all platforms too. But I, you know, I get calls to play with other artists as well. And I got a couple of major festivals in the books uh, that are uh, coming up pretty soon. And I'm really excited for what the future holds. I'm, I'm grateful for all the work. And, you know, if you want to make a living at music, in my opinion, Nashville's the place to be. That's so cool that you uh, had that passion kind of instilled in you or started to grow in you when you were a child. And here you are getting to do something that you love so much Mm -hmm. and, you know, meeting awesome people all along the way. Now, are you and Nick coming to the Jacksonville area? Not as of yet, but the goal is to, you know, for the entire country. 
Okay, well, we'll have to look for a venue near us. Um, I like to get my listeners together and listen to music, live music when we can. So whenever I can support someone who's been on the podcast, I'd like to do that. So today, you guys, we are talking about John Mayer and all things John Mayer. Did you guys know that he was actually born in 77? So he is the same age as my sister. So that's interesting to me because I thought maybe he was a little bit younger, but born in 77. And the song we're going to be talking about today is from the album Continuum from 2006. And if you guys still don't know who John Mayer is, a couple of songs to spark your memory is maybe Your Body is a Wonderland or Gravity. And then if you want to tell the audience, Lee, the song we're going to talk about today, maybe this song will spark your memory who John Mayer is. So although the song is off the album Continuum, I actually heard the song off of his live album, Live Where the Light Is at the Nokia Theater. Got it. And that is probably one of my favorite live albums ever. Not only is, I mean, John Mayer is an incredible musician and, yeah. you know, personally, I think he's underappreciated mm. for not only his writing ability, but his playing as well. And he has one of the best bands behind him. He's got uh, Steve Jordan, one of the greatest drummers. He's now drumming for the Rolling Stones, if that tells you anything. Oh, wow. Um, I know, right? I mean, Charlie Watts, may he rest in peace, is one of the mm-hmm. best drummers who ever lived because um, he really understood what it meant to serve the music. And for them to find the same thing in Steve Jordan is a testament to his playing as well. So yeah. shout out to Steve if you hear this, man. You're one of my favorites. Um <laughs> And then you got Pino Palladino, who's a great bass player, and he also plays for The Who. So, I oh, mean, wow. you, got a, you got a star-studded cast of guys backing you up. Um, and it's just a great live record. And that's where I heard this song. And the song is, a, it's one of those tunes, like, in my opinion, you can't hear it, and it doesn't bring emotion out of you. It's a very beautifully written song. It's very Agreed. on the nose, and it paints a picture. And I think it's appropriate in certain songs to be on the nose. You know, mm-hmm. some songwriting, it's very much kind of got to figure out what the message is. And that's great, too. But I like very much that this song, if you really listen to the lyrics, you can clearly figure out what it's about. Well, also, if you're going through a breakup, I don't think that you need a song to paint the picture for you. You want the song to bring the emotion out of you, right? And so I think that that's why it's appropriate for it to be on the nose, opposed to kind of suggesting what the song is about. It's it's just out there, plain and simple, like, we used to be a thing, we're going down. Absolutely. And I mean, you can, you can apply that song to anything else, too. Like, the breakup doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be, yeah. you know, a friendship. Like... You can take any song and music is subjective, right? You can take any song and make it about whatever you want. You can apply it to you. If there's anything I have learned in this podcast, yes, (laughs) because I will hear my guest's choice and I will, you know, try to see what I appreciate about the song, what I want to speak to my guest about the song. And then, of course, how did this song impact me and make some form of an assumption? Oh, this person probably likes this because of X, Y, Z. And I'll tell you what, like 95 percent of the time I'm wrong. <laughs> so, you know, there it's totally true that it's it's all based on, you know, our life experiences, where we've been, the things we've faced. And that's depends on how the song is going to land for you. Absolutely. And, you know, there's, it's not even about being right or wrong. Everyone's allowed to an opinion. And that's why two adults can have a discussion, which on on a side note, I feel like people have lost or buried that ability to have a discussion about things without getting out of control or, you know, basing, you know, the art, basing the discussion off of emotion. And you know how it is. We live in a crazy world today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wonder with this song, now my assumption is, and maybe I'll be in the 5% with this one. Did you go through a breakup Does or is it one that reminds you of a breakup or is this losing somebody else in a different capacity? I did go through a breakup that I think would apply to this 100%. You know, I the relationship I was in and believe me, I was not perfect. Well, I want to say it was 2006. So it's 20 years ago, right? We do a lot of growing over that amount of time. Well, maybe you didn't find it in 2006. 
So I should maybe ask you, when did you find that song? And then, you know, how many years ago was that? That again, that what I was saying is, you know, we all have emotional growth that we go through over time. And so maybe those are more immature years opposed to now. So, you know, I found that song right about when the record came out, the live record. And okay, the relationship, I believe, was from like 2015 to maybe 2018. It's, again, it's been so long and it was definitely a relationship where both me and the other person were not happy. But I think that we were both comfortable. Oh, so easy to get comfortable. Yeah. So my cousin, Steven, who's another, who's part of my dad's side of the family, great musician, you know, he got me into John Mayer. So like mm. I was listening to like, you know, Room for Squares, Heavier Things, <laughs> Continuum. And then when that record came out, you know, he turned me on to that record. And that's when I heard that song. And it was right, I believe it was right around 2008 when that came out. This song, when I heard it, uh, we have a, a good neighbor friend of ours that just got divorced. And it's kind of a, you know, of course, just like everything else, right? Stuff goes down and whatever. And he just posted a picture of pulling out a John Mayer record. And we have a record player. And I was like, man, I need to get some John Mayer. And then you suggested this song. And I need to reach out to him and say, hey is this song on there? Because you may really love this song right now. Um, it's just a great breakup song and evokes so much emotion. You know, I mean, what, what kind of emotion were you experiencing from that breakup? And then when you would put this song on, did it, did it change that emotion or is it like you put this song on to feel that emotion? I put the song on because I like the material. Now, whether something's sad, happy, you know, gut wrenching, yeah. angry. I'll just like a song, but yeah, when I'm feeling a certain way, certain songs come to mind and this song definitely came to mind and it was my first relationship. And again, I wasn't perfect. I wasn't, I wasn't proud of myself in a lot of ways. I could have been a better partner to her. You know, after a certain period of time, things ended. Yeah. She's an amazing person. And, you know, I, I wish yeah. her all the best. She was a very good, kind human being and deserves nothing but love and care from her, yeah. whoever, whoever she wants to be with. And I, I would never wish any ill will or anything like that. And I want, I only want the yeah. best for her in life moving forward. So I've been living my life and that feels with all due respect, that feels like so long ago now, you yeah. know, I'm definitely putting myself out there in the dating world again. And I definitely want to get married and have kids. Yeah. But this song is such a powerful song in that way. And it, it really, again, paints a beautiful picture that you can't help but feel when you listen to that, that song and about, that couple. I agree. I thought this was a very, um, like sultry, I mean, very true to John Mayer, of course, song just about that relationship and what that looks like. And, you know, he says in there, he says, you can be a bitch. And sometimes let's see. About uh, the line is, um, you'll uh, be a bitch you because can. you can. Yeah. So he says, you'll be a bitch because you can you'll try to hit me just to hurt me. So you leave me feeling dirty because mm. you can't understand. Mm hmm. I, uh, I think that that's how we are at the end of our relationships, right? Like, especially when we're younger. I think when, as you get older, you can break off more amicably, amicably, <laughs> but when you're younger, that person hurt you. So you're going to hurt them back, you know? So whatever way it goes down and whatever breakup, there's usually one person that gets hurt. And then there's one person that I think the person who gets hurt kind of maybe says things that they don't mean because they they want to get back at him. And I understand that to a certain extent too, you know? So yeah, there's another one. Don't you think we ought to know by now? And, um, I think when it comes to divorce specifically, you know, sometimes people will get divorced and someone starts dating right away and someone will say, I can't believe they're already dating. And it's mm -hmm. like, man, 
it's always over before it's over, right? It's always over between the couple before it's over in public. So when he says, don't you think we ought to know by now? I think that that is, you know, it's not been good for a while. And I think we probably both know it's, it's, it's done. Well, I, I was going to say the same thing. That was actually the line I was, I was going to draw from because in a relationship, for the most part, I like to think two people are aware. Yeah. And even when the writing's on the wall, because of comfortability, you stay together. Even if the room you're in is crumbling down before you, mm -hmm. you feel like you're committed and this is the only way because you're comfortable. And, you know, you can't sacrifice happiness for comfortability. The other, the other thing it makes me think of is uh, for all my listeners who love Love is Blind, um, you know, they, they came out, they met each other, and then they went through part of the experience and then decided that the relationship wasn't for them. And even when they knew it was over, they were still hugging each other and not wanting to let go. And I think that that's the same picture of dancing in a burning room. Everything around you is so uncomfortable and unknown and you don't know what's going to happen, yet you don't want to let go of that person that has been comfortable or has been your comfort zone for so long, but mm -hmm. the writing's on the wall and it's just time to say goodbye, but it's just so hard. And so you're just clinging to that security. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and even as we're talking about this, I mean, it's crazy how this, again, again, to the brilliance of John Mayer and the song itself, it touches on so many different points of a relationship that is not, it's, it's not panning out. And it's looking at it from multiple angles, just on, mm -hmm. on this dissecting of it alone. But I like the first line because I think it really, it really just is like, I think would be more towards finally when you come to a head, right? Like this isn't a silly little, silly little moment. This is not the calm before the storm. This is the deep and dying breath of this love that we've been working on. And that to me is basically when you get to that point, that line is when you get to that point of like, can't do this anymore. This is it. We've done this dance long enough. The house is burnt. The love isn't there. Yeah. This is it. Mm -hmm. And we got to walk away. Mm -hmm. And that, that line really stands out to me because I remember that moment very well for me. Yeah. So I don't think that this is really a song that they play on the radio, right? It, it not really, no. Um, and one more thing I was going to add. Oh, yeah, go ahead, please. Because you also mentioned the line, you know, when it goes, uh, I'll make most of the sadness would be a bitch because you can't. No, you hurt me. You, you, you try and hit me just to hurt me. You know, you leave me feeling dirty. There were plenty of moments where she had every right to be mad at me. I can't blame her for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one of those things where there are plenty of couples or people that were in relationships that can relate to this song. Yeah. Because no relationship is ever perfect. I have been married 23 years almost. <laughs> No relationship is perfect, <laughs> even if you've been married for 23 years. <laughs> but I think the big thing to take away, if anyone can use this as a growing experience moving forward, is to always be honest mm -hmm. and communicate. I feel like if, you are, if you're honest and communicate, no matter what the outcome is, you can at least walk away with your dignity and self-respect in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It feels a lot better to leave a relationship with your head held high. Absolutely. Opposed to, you know, shoulda, mm -hmm. coulda, woulda, and lots of regret. So I think that's pretty solid advice. Hey, podcast land. Wouldn't it be great if you could save time by being able to reply to text, email, and social media messaging all from one place instead of switching between apps? Or better yet, the system replies for you? I didn't know it existed until I started using follow-up speed. I'm going to tell you a little bit more, but first, pen and paper. Go grab them. It's okay. I'll wait. Okay, now, text DETAILS to 904 
1-800-560-5597. Don't worry, it'll be in the show notes. But don't you wish remembering to follow up was just a little bit easier? With follow-up speed, you can set an automation and forget about it. The system does the rest of the work. Before you know it, leads will be in your inbox from the system doing your following up for you. You can also earmark contacts as they enter the system with tags, making it easier to find them later, like watched webinar, or attended Zoom call, or met at chamber. Follow-up speed can do all of that. I know it's hard to wrap your brain around, but it's this detailed system that acts like a CRM, project management, and your all-around hub for all communication, including, but not limited to, following up. Just text details to 904 904- 560-5597 and see it in action for yourself. Now, back to the show. Now, they don't really play this on the radio. So, do you have this on a playlist? Is this a Spotify lookup? Like when when would you, would you ever intentionally pull this song to listen to it? And is it to evoke emotion or is it just like, oh God, this is such a great song. You love maybe the vocals or you love the, you know, the instrumental. Is there, you know, what, what is the piece that you appreciate so much about this song? I mean, this is definitely like, I'm aside from playing music, like music is my life. Like Mm-hmm. I don't know what I would do without it. It's genuinely a part of my soul. Agreed. So when I'm not on stage, I'm listening to it. I'm trying to discover new artists. I'm dissecting music. You know, I'm practicing. I got my practice pad right here, mm-hmm. you know, and like, I love music. And for this song, I'll listen to it whenever I kind of get an inkling to. Mm. And, you know, not necessarily just about because I want to feel, but... Sure. I do. I like that whole record, like I mentioned before, is an, it's an incredible live album. And that mm-hmm. song itself, it's just so not only beautifully written, but on that on that album, beautifully played by some of the greatest musicians that really brought the best out of that song. Because in my opinion, also, you can write the best song in the world, but part of what brings that song to life is the people who play it. Yeah. So if you don't have people that are powerful enough and strong enough to bring out that song. It might not hit as hard or it might not have the same potential, but those guys together brought the best out of that song. So I'll, I'll listen to it for, for multiple reasons, you know, cause it's a great tune. And I, and I think this about other songs too. There's so much music I like and individual yeah. material and artists I can pick out. I can go, I can talk about this all day. Cause you know, yeah. there's, yeah other songs that are like that, even for John, like he's, he's incredible. So, well, I really hope this song is on that record because all I've been thinking about since I saw my friends post and since you chose this song is I'm like, I've got to get that John Mayer record. I want the vinyl. I guarantee you it's on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to get it for sure. Okay. So let me ask you when you get a new CD cassette, whatever, and you take the leaflet out, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the words or are you like, man, I got to listen to the music first and then I'm going to, you know, match the words up to this, this song. Well, as much as I, again, I, I, I'm going to make a side note here. I collect vinyl. Um, oh, cool. And as much as I miss CD and cassette, um, I don't think I've bought one in so long. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I buy vinyl now more than anything. Cause mm-hmm. it's, you know, everything's digital now, which is crazy to me. I mean, it's convenient, but yeah, there's something but, special to be held about a physical album or a record. I agree that you with can't that. get anywhere else. Yeah. 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 You, you, it's like you, you're physically holding uh, the material in your hand. Yeah. So when you were younger and you would buy a cassette or a CD, what would you do? I'd open it and I'd check out like the flap, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, Hey, I'm, 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 I'll confess something today, you know, I was big on NSYNC and Backstreet Boys when they dropped. And I remember my mom <laughs> bought me a No Strings Attached on CD. I also got Millennium. Yes. You know, I interviewed Vanessa on here and she picked a song by NSYNC. Which one? <laughs> 
Um, oh, it's going to be me. It's going to be, be yes, me. it's another one, of course. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be me. <laughs> With, because uh, it's May. So Justin Timberlake. You know, he owns a bar down here, right? No. He owns a bar in Nashville called the 1230 Club. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's like a supper club vibe. It's pretty, it's like you get all the honky tonks and country bars and, and then you got this swanky looking supper club vibe right around the corner. It's pretty neat. <laughs> awesome. I've never seen him in there, but yeah. maybe someday. You never see the owners, right? Hey, if I ever see him, I'll be like, hey, come sit in with my band on Broadway. We'll come, we'll, uh, we'll. <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked you the question about the, leaflet because I feel like some people and the fact that you love country music now I suppose um but usually those I'm, I'm newer to country but yeah yes, I, I just got into yes. it over the past going on I think four years now but I, I do love it I love it as much as I love rock and roll and blues and I never thought I'd say that so <laughs> we've got a it's like, being, it's like being converted right yeah <laughs> That's what I just said. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'll never, I'll never go to church. Next thing you know, you're, uh, <laughs> next thing you know, you're the deacon of it. It's, just, it's the same thing with me. You know, I was always like, rock and roll is king. It'll always be king. I don't like country music. I'm into rock and roll and blues. That's where I am. And then I got my first country gig. <laughs> There's a Facebook group in California for musicians for paid gigs, and I was on that group. And a gentleman who I no mm -hmm. longer work with, he made a post. He was looking for a, a drummer for, for a country band uh, for a festival in Arizona. And I remember thinking, well, I need work right now. And you know what? I'll give, I'll give it a try. I'll give, I'll give something new a try. I was trying to be open-minded. And at the same time, you know, you, you got to work, you got to work. So I remember getting the set list for the first time. Ultimately, he said, yeah, I like your stuff. You want to do this? The gig's yours. Me first. And I get a set list and I'm like, What's a Luke Combs? <laughs> Who's Brooks and Dunn? Oh What's a Waylon Jennings? I who are who are these people? I have no idea. Oh my god! Luke, Luke Bryant. That's a goofy name. It's two first names. <laughs> but now I love it. I love it all, and I'm loving country more and more every day. Like I never thought I would say that. Yeah. As I started to play the material more, as I started to play the gigs, I appreciated the community and the music, and that appreciation. And love is only growing. So. Yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. Well, is there anything more you want to say about this song today, Lee? No, I think we've said everything that needed to be said. Yeah, I would agree with that. Honestly, I think that you left it all on the table and, you know, left the lesson of, you know, hold your head high and honesty and clear communication. And even if it doesn't work out, you get to walk away with some dignity. So I think that's a good lesson for all of our listeners. Podcast Land, this song will be on the playlist for Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. Of course, all the information for Lee will be in the full show notes. And Podcast Land, I hope that you guys enjoyed Lee's memories to this beat. Podcast Land, thank you so much for listening. If you had a few memories of your own pop-up with this episode, make sure to take a screenshot, tag me on social, Tiffany Mason or virtually you and share those memories. I know y'all are listening and I'd love to hear the memories you were reminded of with this song. Also, would you do me a favor and share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it? This is the best way you can help me to grow my audience. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.